Hey everyone, this is me, quick video talking to you about one of the most common ways that broken swords were recycled back in feudal Japan. This is what's called Satsuma Age. And as you can see, the Kisaki, which is the tip, is ground pretty much backwards of a normal sword. This is the Satsuma Age blade in comparison to a more standard katana blade. And as you can see, with both edges facing the same way, it's ground backwards. The reason for that is because on a traditionally made Japanese sword, the edge is harder than the spine because it's differentially hardened. On this sword you can see an acid edge hamon. The hamon is that wavy line at the blade. On a real hamon, that is where the hardened steel is, is right on the edge. If this blade were to break, and then try to just regrind a point on it like normal, you're going to have soft steel at your point, which obviously is not a good thing. It's going to be very susceptible to damage. However, if you go the opposite direction, sort of like a sax, then now you have hardened steel at the tip. Now this wakazashi that I did this to doesn't have a hamon at all. It had a wire brush hamon, which is another style of fake hamon, and I took it off because I do not like wire brush hamon. However, I still wanted to have that look. So, as you can see, if the hamon were on this sword, it would still have hardened steel right at the tip. So the first reason is because functionally it makes pretty much the most functional blade out of a broken blade. That's the first advantage to it. The second reason for this is speed. It's much faster to remove steel from here and then polish it than it would be to reform a tip and then try to polish it again to uh, a proper looking point. Doing this, you just have to remove the steel and then you know, obviously you'd want to polish it. Functionally, you don't necessarily have to polish it, but obviously you want that spot polished. Now, some of you may wonder, why not try to reforge a tip? That would take even longer to do, because then you have to heat up the steel, you have to heat treat it, polish it, etc. In the end, it would just take a long time to do. So, that is the second reason why just remove steel from right here. Now, depending on where your blade breaks off would be dependent on what you're going to end up with. And also, obviously, if the blade broke here and you had a nick below that, you're going to want to cut that off before you go reshaping a point like this. Also, where the blade broke would be dependent on any other possible shortening or whatever that would have to be done. For example, on this blade, if this much of the blade broke off, you don't necessarily have to shorten the handle along with it. You don't necessarily have to shorten the saya, which is the scabbard. You don't have to do it. You could, but you don't have to. Well, if it broke down here to where this much blade broke off, well, now we're down to katana length. So, more than likely, you're going to want to shorten the ska, and more than likely, you're going to want to shorten the saya as well. If it broke down here at wakazashi length, then you're definitely going to want to shorten the ska, and you're definitely going to want to shorten the saya. And the same would be true of if it broke down to tanto length. So that's the advantages of this type of sword tip, but now what's the disadvantages? Well, the first one is pretty subjective. Some people aren't really fond of the look of this because it doesn't have that typical look. Some people don't really like this. Personally, I think it's actually kind of cool. It's definitely different. I like variety in my collection, and so I definitely wanted this tip shape added to my collection. 
Now the second disadvantage is definitely more of a functional issue and that is in noto which is when we're actually putting the sword away. And this is also dependent more than likely on how you have the tip ground. Obviously if it's more tapering this would be less of a problem. The shorter you have it though the more this is going to be a problem. When we are actually doing noto, which is putting the sword away, I want to hold this up high so you can see it. When I'm doing noto with a Satsuma Age tip, as you can see, it kind of just rolls off the hand and into the opening. That might seem like a good thing, but it's really not, because the problem is, from here, at this point, it doesn't give me a lot of information on you know, when to push it in, and definitely more likely to stick your own hand with it if you're not well practiced for it. In comparison, this is a more typical sword tip. I'm going to hold this up again higher so you can see it. The sword just falls right into the opening. This is actually a good thing because from here I know when I feel it fall, it's in line with the opening. So that is definitely a disadvantage of the Satsuma Age tip. However, functionally, it has to be pointed out, obviously, if we're talking about fighting, it's more important how your sword performs in combat rather than how it performs in putting the sword away. And again, this probably wouldn't be as big a deal with a more tapered point. However, it should also be said that with a more tapered point, obviously, that tip is going to be more prone to taking damage. So, it's, it's a trade-off, really. So that's pretty much it. That's how broken swords were recycled back in feudal Japan, and also why they were recycled that way. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Follow me on Facebook and Instagram, and I'll see you next video. See ya!